Oh, hi there. So last week, or was it the week before? I had a student in class ask me about refilling uh, pocket pens, pocket brushes. Um, and I just recorded a video about this, but then I kept calling it the wrong kind of thing. So now I have to do it again. Okay, so quick little explainer. Um, pocket brushes are various kinds of uh, actual uh, brush pens. So actual, by actual I mean, this one is a, it's a watercolor art brush but it's the same kind of synthetic hair. So this is a real, there are individual bristles in this, in this brush head. It's going to get this spread apart for us. There we go. So you can see the individual hairs. Um, it's made of talcum. It's a kind of synthetic nylon hairbrush. And that's relevant because there are also lots of brush pens in the world that are a felt based or rubber based. And, um, they don't really behave the same way as a brush. So when people are talking about uh, brush pens, there are definitely two classes. There are synthetic hair brush pens, or even you can get some expensive ones that have real animal hair brush heads, but I don't really recommend that. Uh, and then there are the rubbery, feathery, uh, uh, rubbery or felt ones. The rubber and felt ones, especially like the Fabric Estelles, for example, they can also be refilled. They have their, make their own ink. But um, usually these, um, are sold to use a branded cartridge over and over again. So for example, this is the pocket brush, which is I'm going to specifically focus on today. And this is their art brush, which is um, usually they come with a water-based colored ink. And uh, you can see, what do I do with my, my other one? Oh, there it is. They also make the a pigment brush. So these are all Pentel. And they're not the only people who do it. So this one's a Mitsubishi themed. Uh, I think it's Uniball actually makes it, but it's uh, branded Mitsubishi and it's quite good. It's got a, a pigment ink uh, in it and this is pigment ink. So those are both uh, a very black, a light safe ink that when it dries, pigment ink typically uh, is essentially permanent more or less. Like it's not like a Sharpie permanent, but it's permanent in the sense that it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, uh, pigment ink pens are quite common. Like this is a, a pigment ink drawing pen from Cat Fabric Castell. I quite like them. Um, and so they're more of a, a drawing nib, not a brush, but they use the pigment as well. Pigment, pig, pig, pigment ink as well, and that means it's going to be very black and light safe. And then if I go over it with uh, watercolors later on, it's not going to bleed or blur. Uh, it's also much better for things like if I want to use bleed-proof white or a Presto pen. This is basically white out a pen, ballpoint pen. Um, if you go over a Sharpie with whiteout, for example, the Sharpie will turn the whiteout sort of purple or blue, depending on the brand of, of, of permanent pen that is. So that's a different kind of permanent. This is not permanent in the sense that it'll write on everything or that it will never be um, something you can rub off, but it's permanent in the sense that it's water safe. So once you, I, I've made these marks earlier, and if I go over it with watercolor now, they won't bleed. Um, but the some of the catches, these ones to get to, to refill them, you actually have to buy this handle is the cartridge, the whole handle comes off. So they always catch me because they counterintuitively counterintuitive, but this how you screw them off. This whole unit is what you buy the refill for. And you keep your head, the brush head here. Um, and I can probably refill some of that. It's getting kind of low. Uh, it's got a, a feed mechanism inside of it, but it's a soft body handle. And to get more ink, one of the advantages of these is that you can give the handle a little bit of a squeeze and it will push more ink into the brush head. So if it's getting a little dry, you can control that. Um, and they hold a lot of ink. So they, they last a long time before they need to fill in. Pocket brushes are super portable and, and convenient, uh, but they're hard body, so you don't have that squeeze mechanism. And then their cartridge... By the way, when you take the cartridges out into these, keep the lid on. It's just easier to handle. Just unscrew the base. The cartridges are small. <laughs> so they don't last that long, especially if you use these at all to fill in blacks, which I don't recommend. So if you go to buy it in the store, you get a pack of four of these. Uh, FP10 Pentel pocket brush ink cartridges for about seven-ish dollars, maybe more. So yeah, it's not the cheapest ink in the world. And what I always recommend to students is use it for your line drawing. Don't fill your blacks with it. 
because it's just annoying anyway. You'll go through your ink so fast. Uh, you could look for um, uh, a, one of those refillable fountain pen cartridges to fit in here, but it's a little tricky because a lot of them, uh, notice how this is sort of narrow. So here's an example. This is actually a platinum carbon black cartridge. And see how it's got a little flange, a lip? So if I tried to put that in my, my pen, it gets in the way. It won't properly go in. So that's one of the problems if you look for one of those um, refillable plunger-based um, cartridges that you would put here. Uh, oh, I got an old one here, I think. Is it empty? I don't know. I'll go back to that. I want to keep the video short. But so, and buying more of them can get a little pricey. So can you refill them? Yes, you can. But you need a tool. So I know some people who do this the hard way, like I've heard of people using a piece of thread. But the issue is the opening is very small. And if you're trying to pour ink in that, it's pretty much impossible. You'll make a mess. Um, I know people who put a piece of thread in it and use an eyedropper to lead the ink on the thread into the hole. Apparently it works, but that's crazy talk to me. I don't have that kind of... I have the patience to do it, strictly speaking, but I don't have that kind of time. Why bother? Not when you've got one of these. So this is key ingredient here. Now, sometimes you can get syringes with no needle tip, and that will sort of work. You can get it in there. But you still have a problem because it's airtight now. So you're... One of the issues is you have such a small hole and you put ink in, air is going to come out and that'll push ink with it. So this will still create a, 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 an explosive problem with the ink going in and the air trying to come out. Uh, so what you really need is a syringe you can book right in, and, but leave a little space so the ink's going in the bottom and the air is coming out the top and there's no traffic jam. Um, some sort of reservoir like this and some paper towel is a good idea. So I can leave it in there. We'll put things in that when I, I'm not handling them. And then what ink to use. So don't put um, India ink or Chinese ink. Those are both the same thing, the different terms depending on the branding. That's a lacquer-based ink. And don't use like Liquitex, uh, latex-based ink, because both of those have drying agents in them that will allow the ink to slowly over time dry and clog your feed. The feed mechanism is a, a set of basically like floors or fins that the ink has to pass through to get to the brush, and that's meant to slow it down. Um, so you don't get a gushing flow. You can't see that in these guys because it's all black, but they've got one as well. And so fountain pens have them. That's a very standard mechanism in a fountain pen. Mine's gotten very black here, so you can't really see, but that's because there's ink in it. Um, and these pocket brushes are essentially forms of fountain pens. In fact, this particular one, Kiritaka number eight, is called a fountain brush. Um, this is the, the uh, carbon black Sorry, Platinum brand, same, the ink we're going to have to see, fountain pen, desk pen. I quite like it. It's a really good, fine point drawing pen. So I don't like dip nibs and I don't like dip brushes because the whole ink management and stuff, when you've got a real brush and you're, you get loaded with ink and you have to manage the ink load and draw for a couple strokes and then it's run out and you got to get some more ink and then manage the ink load, draw. It's annoying. So, and even doubly so for nibs. So I find them annoying and, and time consuming. The comparison being this is i have one here's a, a g nib which if i'm going to use a nib it's the only kind i tolerate because i have a slight rounding here uh, I, otherwise i find them much too scratchy um but i really avoid using this this has gotten only used like a handful of times instead i prefer something like this it's got a reservoir like our, our pocket brush a little cartridge there and i can load it up now I discovered this actually right after I discovered the ink because the ink is the solution to our problem. What kind of ink to put in these brushes? Why can't we just get the Pentel pocket brush ink like in a bottle? They don't sell it. It's really sad. It's very annoying. They only sell it in these little cartridges. If you're lucky enough to come across the older cartridges, where is it? There we go. They look like this, almost identical. So you'll see the branding on the barrel is the same, but it's got a ball bearing in it. I have a couple of these left still. I found at the bottom of a drawer that I'd forgotten about. But nowadays you get them a little plastic cork in there instead. And the plastic is softer, I find. So you want to be careful when you're applying it and removing it. Um, it can fold. Um, the ball bearing ones are great because they I find them a little more durable. Um, so for this refilling purposes, if you have them, hang on to them. Um, but right now we're going to use an empty one of these newer cartridges. So when you get it, running out of ink it'll look like something like this might be a little cleaner but you know you can see through it that's handy so 
let's put it there. So the first thing you want to do is get some ink. Now, they don't hold a lot. That's one of the advantages of these guys. They hold so much and go for a long time. This thing, it's really quite small. Um, advantage of having just shot this but getting the name of the pen wrong several times is that I've actually figured out roughly how much ink to grab. So ballpark, that's going to be as much ink as you want. My plunger is right there. So the rest of that is the ink. Not a lot. doesn't hold a ton. Get your nib. Not your nib. Sorry, your, your needle. You put it all in there. You could use a real sharp needle, too, if you have one. Just be careful. Don't stab yourself. But you need some sort of thing to point it in. And then just gently push. Not moving. Gently. There we go. I don't want to squirt fast because it will gush out. So I'm squirting in slowly. And you can see here. There. Perfect. Perfect. And it exactly just shine. You don't want to fill it right to the top because there's a thing that's going to go in there. And if it's full too much, this little nib is going to displace ink and then it'll gush. So then normally when you have a new one, you can do this upside down. But because this is an old one, I want to do it this way. So I put it in and push. And you can see how far it went. So I've now refilled and reloaded my ink cartridge. It's simple. It's very straightforward. The only catch here being is you will want something like this to do the job nicely. Uh, eyedropper could kind of work, but they're a little bit, again, you have the same problem that this would. They're a little bit big, and they don't get right in deep into the knit, uh, the cartridge. So you're still probably going to have a mess. You, even without the mess, you're going to want this to catch spills and things and put things in when you're done. And don't remember, don't forget to uh, put the cap on your ink. Don't leave it sitting around open because that's how accidents happen. Um, it should work pretty much right away. Just taking a couple of seconds for the ink to flow. And there we go. It's getting quite nice. This is a good ink for these. I find it's even a little stabler. Like this is this stuff's amazing. I really like the Presto, not Presto, Pentel pocket brush ink. It's really meant just for these pocket brushes. They don't sell it in a the bottle. They only sell in these cartridges. It's got some very nice properties about it. It's a little gray uh, when it because it absorbs into the paper a lot, so it's not as black as some. But I quite like it. Um, but the carbon black, the press, the platinum carbon black ink, it's just like it sounds like it's super black, it's super black. Uh, it's semi permanent. It's not quite the same as uh, a pigment ink, but it it kind of is a very similar creature in that. So once it's dry. It's pretty much done. It's not going anywhere. You can go over it with watercolor and the line will stay crisp. The one thing about the carbon black is it's so it's made with uh, nano particles of carbon in whatever suspension medium they use. And it's so intense. Like there's so much of that, those nanoparticles that if you go over it with watercolor, there is some chance of it tinting the watercolor a little bit. You want to watch out for that a little. Um, that said, I'm usually doing ink wash. So it's not really an issue for me. I'm just a question of degrees of tint. Um, so that's how that works. Straightforward. Just to point out, if you have one of these babies, this is pretty much the same deal. I just refilled this one for the, the first attempt of this video, so I will add some new ink to this. Um, first of all, by the way, the tops unscrew counterintuitively. <laughs> uh, so get the direction right. It's not jammed when you, you can't open it. It's just you get the spin correctly. And then you can see this one's handy, actually, because it's got the gray, and then you can see the, the black cap which has got a little hole here, and that's where the ink's coming out. So I have this, so I need some sort of blade or sharp bit to put in there and get under the edge and gently lift. I don't want to cut it or damage it too much. You will expect over time to get a little bit damaged, but... And so you can see now, that's now coming out. Now, when I first opened one of these up, I didn't understand what I was seeing. This is like a soft plastic handle, and that whole thing, the ink's right in there. When you pull this out, you got this long shaft. What's the deal? And actually, for one of these, this is why this cup's here. I can put this stand down. For the first one, I went and cut this off stupidly. That was a mistake. So just to quickly explain. So what you're going to find is there's this long shaft. And if you opened it up, there's another shaft inside it. And there are this first shaft, there are holes in the base. So when you're holding it upside down, the ink can get in there. And then the second shaft has a hole in the top. Yeah. And so the ink has to go in, up and then all the way down to get to the hole. So it's another feed mechanism. These guys have a feed mechanism in the head as well, right there. But they built one into the reservoir additionally. So when you squeeze the outside of this, it's forcing ink into this, and then this is the feed that 
the, the, the reservoir that feeds the brush head, which is probably a clever way to manage the ink flow. And then everything from this point on, if you need to refill this, this is pretty full, so I'm not going to refill it. Um, you do the same thing. You get your your your, uh, your plunger, put it in there, fill it up. Again, because it has this large mechanism, do not fill it all away. Leave it about a third empty because it's going to displace ink when it goes in and then it'll overflow. And these guys will actually be refilled with this thing fairly easy because as you can see, I can get the nib in there to squirt the ink in but still leave room for the air to get out. So they're easier to refill. So let me just put this back in. When you're done, this goes in. Give it a little bit of a push. You have to clean your hands. And then you're good to go. Rock and roll. There we go. And that's how you refill your brush pens. Um, pretty straightforward. Not rocket science. Don't be afraid of it. And yeah, I don't know if it saves that much money. The Carbon Black isn't the cheapest ink in the world, but it probably is cheaper for a bottle of that than the equivalent number of these little cartridges. So good way to possibly save a few bucks and uh, keep on inking at your leisure without worrying about having to ration your ink. That's it. Have fun, and I'll see you around the internets.